Let's solve leak code 96 unique binary search trees. So we're given an integer n. In this example, we're given the integer 3, and we want to know how many unique binary search trees can we make from these integers. So this sounds like a pretty simple problem, right? So let's think about the most simple case. What if we were given just one number, and let's say it was 1? Then we can only make one search, uh, binary search tree with this, right? Just 1 as a root node. Okay, what if we were given two numbers, 1 and 2? There's two trees we could make with this, right? What if the root node was 1? In that case, we have a root 1, and then we can only put the 2 in the right subtree, right? Because that's how a binary search tree works. So that this is one solution. Another one is, what if 2 was the root of this tree? Then we can only put the 1 in the left subtree, because that's how a binary search tree works. So summarizing what we know, if we had the number of nodes, so in this table, if we had one node, then we would only have one tree. If we had two nodes, we would have two trees. Now in this example, they even tell us if we have three nodes, then we can only have five trees. But the question is, how can you figure this out? Let's take a look at if we had three nodes. So let's say we have three values, one, two, and three. Now if we had one as the root node, that means we have to put these two values in the right subtree of one. Now they could be ordered in two different ways. Obviously we could have two as the root, or two as the parent and then three as the child, or we could have three as the parent and then two as the left child. Do you kind of notice how the numbers themselves don't matter? Whether it's a 2 and a 3 or it's a 1 and a 2, the number of trees we can make from it is the same regardless of what the values are. Now if we had 2 as the root, then we only have one possible way, right? We have to put the 1 in the left subtree, and we have to put the, the 3 in the right subtree. If our 3 is the root though, then we got to put both of these in the left subtree. So it's kind of symmetrical to what happened when one was our root. Remember, we had to put these two values in the right subtree, but now we're doing the opposite. Three is the root, so we got to put one and two in the left subtree. It could either be like this, or it could be like this. Basically, this is a recursive problem, right? Assuming we had an arbitrary number of values, right? One, two, three, four, five, and some other value. We have to consider that each value could be the root at some point, right? So for example, let's say two is the root. Then that means one value is gonna go in its left subtree and three values are gonna go in the right subtree. So then the result of this becomes, so how many trees could we have where two is our root? And then let's say we have two subtrees. Well, it's going to be the number of trees we can make from just one value, right? So number of trees with just one as the input. So with one value. And we already know that, right? That's the base case. With only one node, you can only have one tree. That's pretty easy. What about three? What if we have three nodes in our right subtree? Well, if we compute that before number of trees in the right subtree, let's say we already know that because we kind of do, right? We just computed that here. We know it's five. So then we can take these two values and multiply them together because we're getting the total number of combinations, right? And since we want the number of combinations, we have to multiply. That's just the rule, right? And we have to do this for every single root. So in the case where one is the root, if one was our root, then that means in the left subtree, there's nothing here, right? So the number of trees of zero. Now with zero, that's also kind of a base case. If you have no nodes, well, you can only have one possible tree, right? And in the right subtree, we have four different values. So we want the number of trees we can get with four values. And we're going to multiply these together again. And we're basically going to take these multiplications that we're doing and we're going to do that for every single value considered as the root node and we're going to sum them up 
So the thing, another thing to notice is that if we want to compute the number of trees of let's say four, then to compute that we have to have the number of trees of one, number of trees of two, number of trees of three nodes as well, because we know that the subtrees could be this large, as well as zero of course, but that's a base case that we don't really have to compute. Now, since we're doing this, this is kind of like a dynamic programming problem, right? You solve the sub problem. So for example, how many trees could you make with one node? Then you solve how many you could make with two nodes, three nodes up until we get to N. Now the time complexity of this is I think big O of N squared, because if we want to compute the number of nodes, a number of trees we can make with four nodes, for example, we got to iterate through the entire list of four numbers considering each number as the root node and if we wanted to do that for three nodes we'd have to do the same thing and so since we are doing it in order right from one to two to three all the way up into n it's going to be o of n squared now for space complexity it's also we are using some space because we're going to store the result where we don't want to have to recompute how many tr uh, trees we can make with four nodes, for example. So we're going to store that result. We're going to store it for each value from one to n. So it's going to be big O of n space complexity. So now let me show you the code and it might be even more uh, easy to understand. Okay, so now let's look at the code. Let me write a comment to really show you exactly what we're going to do. So for example, if we wanted the number of trees of four for example with four nodes we would get considering each value is the root node so if, for example the first if we considered the first value as a root we get a left subtree with zero nodes in it and we get a right subtree of three nodes in it and we want to multiply those together and then with this we want to add another one because we could consider the second value as the root node. In that case, our left subtree would have one value in it, and our right subtree would have two values in it. Remember, we have a total of four nodes. So the root is one node, the left subtree has one node, and the right subtree has two nodes. And we can keep doing this, considering each of the four values as the root node. If the third value is the root node, we'd have two values in our left subtree and one value in the right subtree. If the last, the fourth value was the root node, we'd have three values in our left subtree and one value in our right subtree. So with this in mind, I'm gonna go straight into the dynamic programming solution. So remember, we're gonna compute the number of trees from each number from zero all the way to n. So I'm gonna have an initial array, which I'm gonna initialize with ones, and it's gonna be the length of n plus one because we're going from zero to n. And we remember the base case, one or zero nodes equals one tree, right? The empty tree. One node is also one tree with just one root node, right? So we don't have to compute those. We can start right at two. So for starting at two, the number of nodes is in range of two all the way to n. Okay, and now we wanna consider each of these nodes as the root node. So for example, in the first iteration, nodes is gonna be two. We want each, we wanna consider each of those two values as the root. So we're gonna go through in range from one all the way to number of nodes. And from this, remember we're computing this big sum up over here. So I'm gonna declare a variable called total to compute that sum, which I'm gonna initially say is zero. The reason we initialized our array to all ones is for this, these two base cases pretty much. So each iteration of this loop, I'm gonna to add to total. So I'm gonna take number of tree. So how do we get how many are in the left subtree and how do we get how many are in the right subtree? Let's compute that. So the left subtree is basically going to be root minus one, because for example, if we were taking the third node as the root, then the left subtree would have two nodes, three minus one. The right subtree is going to be the total number of nodes minus what root node we have. 
For example, if we had four total nodes and the root node was the second node, we'd have four minus two, meaning two nodes are in the right subtree. So knowing that, let's compute the total. Let's update our total. So we're gonna get the number of, of trees that we can make with the left number of nodes multiplied by the number of trees we can make with the right number of nodes, the nodes that are in the right subtree. And we're gonna add that to total. Now at the end, we're gonna take this total and put it into our cache, which I've called number of trees. Number of trees of these number of nodes. So for the first iteration of the loop, it's gonna be two nodes, it's gonna be mapped to the total. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna compute the number of trees we can get all the way from one to n. And so at the end, remember, we just have to return the one result, number of trees we can make with n nodes. The input was n. And we can return, we can submit this code. And I'm gonna pray that it works. Hopefully I don't have a bug. And it works perfectly because I just did this 18 minutes ago. So I really hope this was helpful. We went straight into the dynamic programming solution. We didn't do any recursion or anything. But I think this is a straightforward enough problem that you can understand from the dynamic programming perspective. If this was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.